finished top eight in the Oceania International Championship this year, but a world championship title would be life-changing. Yeah, you can see a little bit of different personalities between these two players. I think Henry is very focused. He knows what's at stake here. A chance to become world champion, as he said, is surreal. And Shintaro, we've seen him be completely relaxed and nothing but confident throughout this weekend. But as he took his seat there, he kind of took a, a lean back in his chair and maybe took it all in and said, hmm, this might be a big moment. And you can see here, he is the 2016 world champion. He is one of the top players in Japan, if not the best. He is one of the most well-known players in the world, always innovating, coming up with new deck ideas. And he has taken this Blacephalon GX deck to the finals of the world championships. It's one that we were expecting to see do quite well this weekend, but to see it in finals is very impressive nonetheless. Uh, and for Henry Brand here, you can see this year he's had a very good year. Um, top eight Oceania Internationals. He's won uh, a regional at Perth as well as Sydney. He was a finalist. And he's going to be piloting that Mewtwo and Mew GX box deck. It's a really interesting one. Mewtwo and Mew GX, brand new into the expansion from Unified Minds. Um, did you expect to see this deck performing this well, or did you think that maybe it was, I don't know, a bit overhyped? Uh, no, I, I love this deck. I think it's very much deserving of its hype. It's got so many options at its disposal. It's very consistent. It's very straightforward in what you can do. Just put energy onto Mewtwo and Mew GX and let it pick the best attack you have available. Uh, it is a very strong deck, and Henry has played it beautifully to get this far. Uh, I did have a quick chat with Henry uh, before the match, and he was very nervous. Um, okay. I think he knows what's at stake, but he also said this is a very volatile matchup. Uh, it can go either way. It's, uh, there's a lot of turns where just anything can happen. You know, when you're going up against a Blacephalon, there's always that turn where they can play a bunch of those B strings, and you just never know what to expect. But I think under all the nervousness, he was very confident and knew he had what it took to take down the former world champion. I will say I've been in positions not nearly with as much at stake as these players, but where you're, you're playing on stream um, and you haven't quite been to a, a match of that caliber in the past. And it's, it's tough. Um, I mean, you can, you can have all the faith in the world in yourself, and once you get up there, you can still have those butterflies in your stomach. So hopefully, we're just gonna get a really solid match here. These players are obviously masters of their craft. They've taken their decks all the way through the tournament to get to this point, so we have to assume that they know what they're doing in this matchup in particular, and we are about to get started here. With a mulligan. No basic Pokemon in Shintaro's <laughs> opening hand. <laughs> so he's gonna have to shuffle his hand back in. Henry can draw an extra card to start, which I'm sure he'll be happy to have. Uh, any advantage he can get against a player like Shintaro Ito, he will take. And I think if you look at this matchup in pretty much all ways, Henry is gonna be the underdog. Uh, I think his deck is a little bit unfavored against this Blacephalon deck. And you know, you look at their, their stats, their tournament winnings over the years, and Shintaro is a world champion. Mm -hmm. um, but don't count Henry out. He has played extremely well. I got to watch him win his top eight match. And he's just, he's on fire this year. And we'll see if it can all culminate in a world championship victory. Well, we got to see him um, actually give an interview on stream with Anna yesterday as well. And he, it was a fantastic interview. Uh, he's, he's very confident. He's just a very happy to be here kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, and I really appreciated that because for a lot of these players, they are so focused on the end goal that they don't take the time to appreciate it. For a lot of players, they've been here before. Two Naganadal in the prize cards for Shintaro. And he takes a look out in the crowd. It's tough. What's going on here? <laughs> Make no mistake, they've, they've got white noise coming in through their headsets. They can't hear the crowd, ooh, that just happened. But uh, <laughs> Maybe you can certainly the see some eyes <laughs> kind of widen. And you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see if Shintaro can navigate through those Awkward prize cards. All right, the tension is building here as we wait for our first game here in the Masters Division World Championship Finals. If you're out in the crowd, make some noise for these two players. They've battled this far, and now just one match stands between them to decide the world champion. And there is the handshake. We're going to get started.
And we are off to the races here. Game number one of your 2019 Masters Division World Championship Finals are a go. And Henry does go first. Uh, something he did mention to me when I was talking to him is, you know, some decks really, really need to go first. Uh, Malamar decks tend to do much better when they go first. Anything that needs to evolve Pokemon tends to want to go first. Uh, and Henry is saying, that's one of the great things about my deck. I'm okay when I go second. I can welder onto my Mewtwo and Mew GX. I can use attacks on my first turn. So he's comfortable either going first or second. I'm sure he'll be happy to win the opening coin flip here in the finals and be the first player to take their turn. But uh, he, he says, you know what? It's fine if I go second. And it's good to be content in either position. There are a lot of decks that really very heavily rely on going first to be able to get that first energy attachment and attack on turn two. Um, but for Henry to be in a position of flexibility where he's okay with either, th I think that's a big advantage and probably part of the reason why he's made it this far. All right, excellent start from Henry. He gets the turn one welder and two fire energy. So already off to a great start. He's gonna follow it up with this Acrobike. Uh, one thing you'll notice about Henry's deck, it, it, it is incredibly consistent. We see a lot of these Mewtwo and Mew decks, uh, you know, kind of over tech in a lot of situations. Run too many different kinds of Pokemon, not enough consistency cards. Uh, but Henry is playing four Acrobike, four Poke Gear. He's trying to hit those welders as often as possible. And we'll see if he can continue his momentum at the start, gets three energy onto his big Mewtwo and Mew GX, that's all you can really ask for on your first turn. Oh boy. Shintaro though, he's not gonna do very much. <laughs> he's got a pair of Poi Pole, but remember those Naginatl well, are prized. So he's got an awkward spot. He's got all three of his beast rings in his hand. Uh, those are important cards after your opponent has taken a couple prizes. A little early for him. But he's got no supporter cards, um, and he can play this Cherish Ball. And usually when you have a bad hand, you want to go for that Dedene GX, Dede Change, discard your hand, draw six. But can you discard all of your Beast Rings and still win with this deck? Well, you were saying one of the reasons why Henry is nervous about this matchup is because when the time strikes, you never know if your opponent is going to have multiple of those Beast Rings to be able to swing the game in their favor. If Shintaro uses Dead A Change here to try and find a supporter and just have a more consistent opening, he will lose that swing turn later on in the game. Yeah, his turns become a lot more predictable. And Blacephalon is known for being just wildly unpredictable in the middle stages of the game. Sometimes you play three or four beast rings and you get nine energy into play on the same turn. Uh, other games, you don't play any beast rings and instead of knocking out a tag team, you pass the turn. Uh, it's a very hit or miss style of deck, but so far Shintaro has been hitting more than missing, and I think a lot of that is due to his build. He's running that new Naginatl GX from the Unified Minds expansion, that ultra conversion ability gives him more draw power, and on those crucial turns he's able to see more cards in his deck and pull off those huge turns. Looks like he's just going for a Blacephalon though, decides I cannot win if I discard this hand and he has a very slow start. And a lot is going to be riding on the card that he draws next turn. Can he find a supporter card to play? Can he draw out of this really unfortunate start, but doesn't feel like he can afford to give up these beast rings so soon? But that's great news for Henry, because it means that Shintaro is much slower in the opening than he himself is. So a Pokey Gear 3.0 coming out from Henry. You have to look at the top seven cards of your deck take a supporter card and put it into your hand. He only plays two different kinds of supporters in his deck, Welder and Bill's Analysis. So it's like he's taking a look through here and it takes the Welder. The question is, if he has those custom catchers, can he go after that Blacephalon GX this turn or will he be happy to just knock out Poiple? Oh, and he, yeah, he put the Welder in the discard pile. Goes to your hand. <laughs> that's not a card you want to discard <laughs> without using. And I think that's a good example of nerves, like we were talking about. That's that's a small thing. It's ultimately not going to result in many penalties. It's easily resolved. But yep. uh, it's the kind of thing that if you're playing at home with friends, you're not putting that welder in the discard. So hopefully we can just see Henry. I think as, as time goes on in the game, he will start to become more comfortable and, and 
mistakes like that will be a thing of the past. Yeah. The biggest sign of when someone is nervous is when they start shuffling their discard pile. Oh, OK. <laughs> I mean, I, we do see quite a bit of, of players sort of zoning no, I mean, out while shuffling their hands. But I mean, legit, like, they play a card that gets something from the discard pile and, and start Oh, OK. <laughs> Happens to everybody. And That's all right, quite funny. <laughs> we, do, we do see the Reshiram and Charizard GX come out. We just saw that win in the senior division. It's more of a role player in this deck. Mewtwo and Mew GX can copy any of its attacks, such as that Flare Strike. And we do see Double Custom Catcher wow. bringing up Lacephalon right away. And we're going to see the Flare Strike for the knockout. Henry, on his second turn, takes a two-prize knockout. And he's in the lead. Shintaro is on the back foot. So early to have both of those Custom Catchers. But Henry, you know, having had two turns of consecutive supporter draws, oh was a bit deeper into his deck than Shintaro is. And that's a big advantage now. So Shintaro can play all three of his beast rings this turn, but there's no Blacephalon to put the energy onto. He's still got to do it all. And I think all he has in his hand after that is a custom catcher to draw two cards. If he doesn't draw anything good off those two cards, we might see this game get out of hand very quickly. But if he can pick up a supporter off of those two cards or... Something. I guess something. something. <laughs> He's got a lot of something in his deck. All right, this is a big two cards off of this custom catcher. Draw till you have three cards in your hand. What is it going to be? He's got to place those energy. There you go. <laughs> he finds a Hapu. That is a supporter he can play. All right. It's probably not the best thing he could have seen, but at least it gives him something. Considering he is running uh, four copies of Cynthia, four copies of Welder, a single copy of Lily, and a single copy of Hapu, he would have much rather had uh, a Cynthia or a Welder here to dig deeper into the deck. Yeah, and he only gets to take two of those six cards. And I think the best card to find here would have been Dedenne GX, so that you could Dedenne change yep. for six more cards. He's not afraid of discarding his hand now that the Beast Rings have been played. And he does pick up a Blacephalon GX and the Ultra Space. So he can start to search out that Naganadal GX and maybe dig deeper into his deck. All things considered, Henry taking that knockout onto Blacephalon GX was a bit of a blessing in disguise for Shintaro. It meant that he was able to use <laughs> his Beast Rings very early on yeah. um, and wouldn't be worried about discarding his hand at that point. So he's certainly behind, but now that he's able to draw out of that sticky situation he was in on turn one, uh, things are going to be looking a little bit better. All right, Shintaro trying to figure out where should this Naganadal GX go? Should it go on the active that has four energy on it? And he decides okay. yes, and we see ultra conversion. This is another huge point in the game. He's going to draw three cards off of this. And again, this is kind of the important B-string moment. He's already played three of them but none went on to the Blacephalon GX. So those are some excellent cards off of that Ultra Conversion. Finds another Blacephalon, now Naganadal and Dedenne GX. But he's already played his supporter for the turn. He's already played all of his Beast Rings. There won't be any attack from Blacephalon GX, at least not a mind blown. So that Mewtwo and Mew GX isn't going anywhere. Six fresh cards off of Dead A Change. Let's see what he's able to find. Does pick up a Cherish Ball. And we do see Heatran GX. This is a card that can change the momentum of this game. This is where all those B-strings pay off. Heatran GX has been a standout card here at the World Championships this weekend. That Burning Road ability will allow him to move all those fire energy to his Heatran GX and swing in with that hot burn GX and get a three prize knockout. That was an excellent find. Yeah, Heatran GX has really been a standout um, in several different decks here this weekend. And just think of where this turn started. Shintaro had basically an unplayable hand, uh, was relying on a custom catcher to draw two cards, and it turned into this. Yeah, that Hoppa was really clutch. 
We are going to see that heat tran come down. When it moves into the active, that's when the burning road ability does take place. So we're going to see these fire energy move on to heat tran. See six energy come up to heat tran GX. For a 300 damage <laughs> hot burn GX attack. Things are heating up here in the finals of the World Championships. We're just a few turns in, and already Haymaker's being thrown back and forth. Henry getting a turn two knockout. Now Shintaro getting a turn two knockout on a tag team. 300 damage, and the Mewtwo and Mew GX goes down. This is what we want to see. We want to see a match where both players are drawing into good hands, where we're seeing it go back and forth, and it's not just a, a thorough stomp. So this is... We're in for a real treat here, I think, in this finals. Even match number one, Shintaro able to draw out of a really poor start, and uh, things are looking a lot better for him now. And this is a big moment for, for Henry. He needs to respond to this Heatran GX and keep up the pressure. He can, uh, he's gonna giant hearth here. He's got a welder in hand. If he can draw a third energy, he can use double blaze GX with Reshram and Charizard, hit for 200, and keep on the pressure, go down to two prize cards, and really make Shintaro need to have an answer. Yeah, you were saying that uh, Reshram and Charizard is more of a support Pokemon in this deck just to allow uh, its attacks to be used by Mewtwo and Mew GX. but because you're playing fire energy with all of the fire energy support, you still can attack directly with Reshram and Charizard. Yeah, and in this situation, it's even better. Uh, Shintaro is at three prize cards, so there's that turning point attack on Naganadal, and Mewtwo and Mew GX is weak to Psychic, Yes. So sometimes Naganadal can just straight up knock out Mewtwo and Mew GX, whereas Reshram and Charizard is not weak to Psychic. We do see the Welder, two Fire Energy, go on to that Reshram and Charizard. Both players hitting exactly what they need at this point, and does Henry find that third energy? He has a Psychic Energy in his hand. We're going to see an Acrobike first. All right, and he does find Fire Crystal, that's going to do it. And Henry will continue his excellent start. He's saying to Shintaro, I'm going to knock out your Pokemon. You need to do the same. And if Shintaro does have the tools he needs, he can take a knockout onto Reshram and Charizard and simply end the game with his two tag team GX knockouts, whereas Henry will need one more GX knockout on his following turn. So the, the pressure is definitely on Shintaro right now. If this Reshiram and Charizard stays on the board, Henry will very likely be able to take a knockout on the next turn. Yeah, we do see Dedenne GX come down. I think Henry knows he's going to need uh, maybe double custom catcher on his next turn to close out the game. And there we do see double blaze GX 200 damage to Heatran. And Henry's now down to two prize cards. Now it is possible for Shintaro to win this turn if he can get two Naganadal out, a Welder, and then three Fire Energy. That gets him up to six, and that will be mind blown, and the game will end on the third turn. And this is just That's a lot to ask, goes. though. It is, it's, yes. It's, it's a very volatile matchup. You're obviously seeing knockouts back and forth, but Shintaro not playing those Tag Team GX Pokemon does give him that, that bit of an edge. He can win with just two knockouts, um, though they are a bit more difficult to take with the higher hit point totals on the Tag Team Pokemon. You see him trying to make this decision, counting how many fire energy have I gone through? How many welders have I gone through? He's playing He's 14 total fire energy in the deck. And it looked like there were about eight or nine of them already in the discard pile. Obviously, having pulled six oh. from the beast ring thinned the deck significantly. So the giant hearth is out there as well. So finding the fire energy is mostly trivial. Yeah. It's does he have welder? He's trying to figure out, do I promote this Blacephalon GX and hope I draw a welder for the turn or some way to draw into it? He does have just one Dedenne GX in his deck, and he's already played it, so that option is not there. And it's this is a, an agonizing decision, as you can see. It's the he choice between going for the win this turn or perhaps trying to force a knockout onto a Naganadal or a Poipole even and give one more turn to himself to potentially win the game. But then he's opening up, obviously, the opportunity for Henry to win. Yeah, and let's not forget, he also has that ultra conversion ability to draw three extra cards. So between the card for turn and the ultra conversion, 
He needs to find a welder. So it's now on Shintaro's turn. Looks like there's some sort of discussion happening at the yeah, table. Yeah, looks like um, judges are making a call here. When we obviously know what that decision is, we will let you know. Uh, but it looks like it's not in Shintaro's favor. <laughs> he seems to be a bit annoyed. And it, oh. it appears to be a prize penalty for, uh, I guess, failure to act in a timely fashion, failure to promote a Pokemon. And, and in that case, oh. Henry, with the, the two prize penalty against Shintaro, will just win the game. Or Henry wins. Yes, Henry will win with yeah. the two prize penalty against Shintaro. Yeah, so Henry's going to take that first game. Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it's like there was a double prize card penalty issued. And yes. since Henry was at two prize cards, that is game number one. Um, I mean, you hate to see it end like that, but... That's unfortunate, to say the least. It is what it is, and Henry is going to take the first game here in the finals. He's up a game against the former world champion. But it looked like with one turn, we were not 100% sure about what Shintaro had in hand, but it was absolutely possible for him to win the game that turn. Um, yeah, and very he possible actually, that he wouldn't have had it and Henry would have won anyway, but... Yeah, he actually revealed never know. his next card and it was a welder. <laughs> okay. Now, I think he probably would use Giant Hearth first to thin cards out of his deck and then Ultra Conversion, so I don't know. Welder being on mm -hmm. top of his deck really mattered because he already drew his card for the turn, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, he well. would have won if he hit all the necessary cards, but that's behind us now. We are on to game number two. Shintaro has to shake off whatever happened there and recompose himself. He is still in this match, just has to win the next two games. And ooh, two welder prized, along with a B-string. We see Macargo GX and a couple acro bikes, nothing too important for Henry. But we're gonna kick off game number two here. In the finals of the World Championships, can Shintaro bring this back? 2016 World Champion. He's been on this stage before, so certainly he's dealt with the pressure. Game number one, we'll call it unfortunate. But game number two is a fresh start, and he is going to be able to go first this game. That's right, and he has a much better start than he did in the first game. Already Mysterious Treasure for a Poiple, Ultra Space for a Naganadal GX, and uh, you can see he's playing a little faster. Um, he has picked up the pace a little bit, slamming that Naganadal GX down onto the board. All right, but no supporter card for Shintaro. Uh, but on Henry's side, we see the Welder turn one yet again. Two Fire Energy go onto the Mewtwo and Mew GX. And we could see something like a turn one Double Blaze GX to knock out this Blacephalon. That and would be a massive advantage for Henry and a heck of a way to start out game number two. I wonder if he'll go for it. Does Henry strike you as a particularly aggressive player? Um... I think that's a hard question to answer. Yeah, um, play styles aren't so Henry, prominent in this game. Yeah, Henry, Henry for most of the season played Zorark decks. Zorark Lycanroc was one of his favorite decks. Yeah. And uh, I think he actually helped build the Zorark Naganadal deck that we saw Stefan use at the North America International Championship. So um, he seemed to be more of a Zorark kind of guy. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing this Mewtwo and Mew deck, you just become a more aggressive player. Yeah, I think that's, it's, that's what your deck's trying to do. It kind of forces you to take risks, it seems, because you have such powerful potential plays. If you do take those risks and are rewarded for them, um, it's just, you know, when you happen to not get what you need and then you are punished as a result, it feels pretty bad. But yeah. we'll see if, if that's going to be the case here or if Henry will be able to get a knockout. Yeah, I, I think if you're sitting in Henry's seat, you saw your opponent not play a supporter card and you just say, all right, I'm going to go for knockouts. This could backfire, but if you don't have any supporters and I just attack you every turn, I'm going to win pretty fast. So it looked like uh, the penalty that was issued in the first game, uh, Shintaro was issued a warning 
early on in the game, and then uh, as he was taking too long to promote his Pokemon, mm -hmm. uh, he then received a penalty. But we do see the double blaze, GX, knocking out Blacephalon, and does Shintaro have anything? He draws a Lily for the turn. Turn number one, Henry already has taken two of his prize cards. He's gonna draw six cards. That's just about the best possible situation for Shintaro, but he still needs to get out of this early disadvantage. All right, this is the big turn. He went from nothing to perhaps everything. Now playing the Cherish Ball, he can grab Dedenne GX if it's in there. Oh, he's going to find Naganadal, actually. Okay, he still has the Ultra Conversion to draw three more cards. Uh, this is where you need to find those Beast Rings as soon as possible. If he can knock out this Mewtwo and Mew GX this turn, it's going to be tough for Henry to have a response. He's already burned up his GX attack. I don't think you can fault him for doing it. His opponent showed him that he didn't really have anything, and then Shintaro just top-decked Lily for the turn. This is a very similar situation to what we saw in the previous game with Shintaro going down two prizes, and then with triple B-string was able to bring it back. Now, can he find those B-strings here and actually take a return knockout? We do see him discard the Heatran to the Giant Hearth. Going to go search up two fire energy. Heatran was pretty pivotal in the previous game, but with no energy on the board, it's not going to be useful right now. And what else does Shintaro have in his hand? Does he have any way to draw into Beast Rings? Does he already have a Dedenne GX? What kind of magic can he pull off on his second turn of the game? Looks like we got some more talk going on at the table. Ah. Shintaro has received uh, penalties in earlier rounds for insufficient randomization. And, oh, he has. Um, not sure what's going on here, but I guess we will find out shortly. Looks like this turn will continue. Okay. All right, so play has resumed. We'll see the Ultra Conversion. Big three cards here. Does he find any Beast Rings? It's like Mysterious Treasure and a couple Custom Catchers. Yeah, the Mysterious Treasure only gets a Poiple. This is not going to be a very explosive turn for him. Huh, we'll see how this turn plays out. This is the window where you need to find those Beast Rings. You can only play it if your opponent has exactly three or four prize cards. And when you do, it's an incredibly powerful effect. But no, it looks like his hand is just not very good. No base strings at the right time. Oh, he already nice. placed that psychic energy for the turn. He sure did. So again, another... Another small oversight by Shintaro. I wonder, you know, we, we assumed coming into this series that because Shintaro had won the 2016 World Championships and he'd been uh, to this stage before, that he would be the one that had, uh, you know, more comfort in this seat. Right. But it, it seems like he's kind of at the mercy of nerves as well. Uh, nobody is immune to being nervous, Absolutely feeling the nerves not. in a, in a high-pressure situation. Uh, we see it happen to even the best players, and especially, you know, if you're in a spot where you've been hit with a penalty, uh, it just makes things even worse. You get in your own head. Yeah, I mean, it can you, compound. You have people telling you you just have to let it go, but that's yeah, mm, that's easier said than done. Yeah, when you've right. had maybe five minutes since it happened, <laughs> that's not easy. Uh, but, but we did it, see the reset stamp into four cards for Henry. We're going to see a mysterious treasure to kick off the turn. Yeah, if you're Henry, everything is still going right. He has done everything right in this finals. He's gotten quick attacks in each game. He's kept the pressure on his opponent. He's taking every opportunity that's been given to him. If he can find double custom catcher this turn, he can essentially lock out the game knock out the Blacephalon GX on the bench and basically be on his way to become world champion. He's already got one game under his belt. He's ahead in game number two. 
Wants to remain hydrated. Very important. It is. <laughs> Drink your water, folks. Eight ounces here and there. <laughs> That's all it takes. You play Pokemon at a higher level. <laughs> I can't actually guarantee that. Yeah. It's very likely, though. If you drank no water the whole day, and then you drank water, I think you would start to play better. I think you'd feel better, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. True. All right, so game number two still in progress. This will be a huge moment for our player from Australia. He is looking for custom catchers on this turn. I think he already has one in hand. I think he's got an acro bike as well. He does. So there's a chance that he can find it. If he can find double custom catcher attached to the Mewtwo and Mew GX, he can flare strike the Blacephalon GX on the bench and skip over that beast ring turn and be on his way mm -hmm. to becoming our first Australian world champion in the Masters division. And just for clarification, um, we have received words from the ref that's saying uh, it was actually the culmination of the previous round's warnings for Shintaro that resulted in the prize penalty in the previous game. Right. Otherwise, there would have been maybe a little bit more leniency. Yeah, he did get a warning in his top four match against Tord Reklev. Mm. And that is something that has been kept track of. And it looks like the judge is saying we will have a two-minute time extension Okay. for uh, all the delays we've had in this game. I don't think we'll be in any danger of... Running out of time in this match. <laughs> these tur these games don't last very many turns in this no. matchup. We've uh, got about 50 minutes on the clock now. But there has right. been quite a bit of discussion, so important to uh, amend the time accordingly. We're going to see Giant Hearth here. Henry fishing out a couple more fire energy from the deck. All right. I don't think he found the second custom catcher off of the acro bike. So we'll see what he decides to go with here. Does discard that Mewtwo and Mew GX. He's actually in a position where he could potentially attack with Marshadow. The Red Knuckles can knock out that Poiple since it is an Ultra Beast. That is a potential option if he wants to go for it. Also has a Welder in hand, so he can Welder to the benched Reshram and Charizard GX and set himself up for future turns. What does he draw off of these three cards? Fire energy, giant hearth, All right, just perhaps a, a pokey gear. Oh, it looks like there might be another acro bike in hand. Or he has, oh no, that's his discard. My bad. All right, fourth energy goes on to the Mewtwo and Mew GX. And we're actually going to see Naganoddle GX's Venom Shot taking out the Naganoddle on the bench taking away some precious energy from Shintaro, and this is his last opportunity. He needs multiple beast rings on this turn. We saw him trying to find them on the previous turn. It didn't happen. Uh, that bench barrier Mew going to be coming down a little bit late for Shintaro. That could have protected the Naganoddle from that Venom shot, uh, but it wasn't in play at the time. Okay, and he's left himself with just two custom catchers in hand. He's going to Giant Hearth and discard a card from his hand so he can draw two cards here, but he's living on whatever the top couple cards are. They'd better be good. He's hoping they his, are. His world championship run is going to depend on it. He just needs cards he can play. Looks like two Cynthia. And he's going to start off with that. So no welder this turn. Well, he needs a lot of B-strings this turn. He might need all of them. Well, he's got six cards to find them. And he does have an ultra conversion as well. His odds aren't great, but it's as good as it's going to get here. All right. Important six cards for Shintaro as he's trying to keep his hopes alive of becoming a two-time world champion. It looks like he did find one B-string. Welder, looks like it. fire energy, custom catcher. So we do see charging up with this Naganoddle. Let's you take 
a basic energy card from your discard pile and attach it to Naganadal. And there is the Beast Ring. Go ahead and put two energy on that Blacephalon GX. There are now four in play. He is already attached for the turn. He's already used charging up that Poiple on the bench. Mm -hmm. Was just played this turn, so no more charging up. And he's got to get to six energy to hit for 300 and knock out this Mewtwo and Mew. He's going to custom catch her for one card. He gets a beast ring. Oh, wow. What a card. But is it enough? He's already played his supporter for the turn. He's only going to get to... Well, he's going to have six energy in play, but he has to retreat one off in order to attack with Blacephalon GX. Remember, he discarded that Heatran GX very early on this game. We saw... And he's already filled his bench. Yeah. That Mew had to come down just so he could find more cards off of the Custom Catcher to be able to get the Cynthia, but he filled his bench in the process. I think he's just one energy short. And this, this game was decided perhaps by Henry deciding to use that Naganadal GX Venom shot to knock out a benched Pokemon to instead. charging up. Yeah, and knock out a benched Pokemon instead of the active Pokemon, forcing Shintaro to use an energy to retreat. And yeah, he's just gonna have to use that bursting burn attack. Confused and burned is Mewtwo and Mew GX. Let's see if it's still burned, it is. And now we reach an important point in this game. Does he find a switch to move that Mewtwo and Mew to the bench, or will he be forced to retreat? It's like electromagnetic radar and a Cherish Ball from the Acrobike. He's going to go with the Cherish Ball. Now he still needs to find a welder to power up an attack big enough to knock out this Blacephalon GX. We haven't seen many of the tools in this Mewtwo and Mew GX deck quite yet. It's been mostly Reshiram and Charizard as the attacks being used. One from Naganadal GX. Does Henry have any other tricks he can use here? He's going to Cherish Ball for that Solaleo GX. One of the few uh, two energy attacks that Henry has access to in his deck. Okay, and this is a big pokey gear. He wants to find yet another welder. If he can find it, he can power up that Reshram and Charizard GX and flare strike for the knockout and put himself in a position to go down to one prize card and potentially be a world champion in just a few turns. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. And he finds the Bills analysis, not quite what he was looking for, but still going to be a decent card in this situation. I think a switch is still very much a good card to draw. Mm -hmm. We've seen Shintaro burn through, I think, three custom catchers. So he won't have that option to go after Henry's benched Pokemon at this point. If Henry simply switches to the bench and slowly powers up his tag teams, he can set up a game plan or he's going to win before Shintaro has an opportunity to take all six of his prizes. Yeah, it looks like he's missed the opportunity to take a knockout this turn and then win the game on the following turn, but Shintaro still has six prizes that he needs to take, so Henry might have a little bit more time here. So we see Bill's analysis. You have to look at your top seven cards, take two trainer cards, and put them into your hand. One of them is that custom catcher, Second, looks like it may be a Cherish Ball or Mysterious Treasure. No switch in his top seven cards. And then the question is, does he dig deeper? He does have Dedenne GX in hand. He could try to Dede change into that switch. He's got two of them in the deck. Oh, double Custom Catcher going after Poiple. This gets him out of Beast Ring range and gets him down to two prize cards. And he can do it all attacking with Marshadow, a non-tag team. That Red Knuckles attack, 10 damage plus an additional 60 if your opponent's active Pokemon is an Ultra Beast. This is brilliant. Marshadow mostly used for that resetting hole ability, a counter to that Power Plant Stadium. But in this situation, can be used against this Ultra Beast deck. 
Yeah, this is this is incredibly smart from Henry. He needs to get Shintaro out of Beast Ring range because he's only seen two of them so far. He knows there's still two left in the deck. Um, and that could be a big swing in Shintaro's favor. So Henry going down to two prizes here, puts himself in a position to potentially take a GX knockout and win the game on the following turn and prevents all of those Beast Ring shenanigans. See the dead A change for six new cards. Finds an Acrobike. Is there a switch in here? No. Nope, Looks like just... he picks up a Custom Catcher. Oh, he's got the switch. He's got it in hand. All right, Marshadow is going to see some action here. The gold switch right on time for Henry Brand. Cora, I think we may have a new world champion soon. I Red think Knuckles. we might. Down to two prize cards. Henry has truly impressed this weekend. He's been such an incredible performer. His play has been crisp. His attitude has been fantastic. Shintaro is still a world champion competitor. He is going to find a way to fight back if he can. We saw him almost able to close out game number one when he started in a very bad position. So can he work his way back here? I think the major problem is he's out of custom catchers, but he can't sit back and do nothing. Uh, he can welder here, attach two fire, draw three cards, but he's going to have to attack the Mars Shadow. And that just doesn't really get him anywhere in terms of advancing the game state towards a victory. I think he needs to find reset stamp this turn and try to disrupt Henry's hand. He doesn't have an attack set up currently to win the game. So if Shintaro can disrupt his hand, perhaps he can claw his way back into the game, but it just looks really bleak. So much would have to go so right for Shintaro here. Right. And so wrong for Henry. Does he find reset stamp off of the ultra conversion? Oh, he finds a heat factory, but no fire energy in hand. He doesn't look happy. He's got a beast energy. Uh, he can custom catcher for one. I'm not sure if he's used the giant hearth yet either. If he hasn't, then he can Giant Hearth for Fire Energy, override it with the Heat Factory. Yeah, so he's still got some plays left. Now, I think Cynthia on hand as well. The major problem for Shintaro is Henry still has Sogaleo GX in the discard, so even if nothing, he has nothing in his hand, he can just Turbo Strike and get two energy on the Reshram and Charizard on the bench. And he'll set himself up for a game-winning flare strike eventually. His lead is just so massive in this game. He's up four prizes. And you see Shintaro. We're going to see a burst GX here. Realizing his run may be over. We see the burst GX discards a welder and says, all right, your turn. If you can knock out my Blacephalon GX, you are the world champion. Can Henry do Henry. it? He looks through his deck with Cherish Ball to make sure there's fire energy left. Plays down the giant hearth. Gets this fire energy if he's got another one in hand and a welder. He's just going to retreat and use Macargo GX. He's going to remove it. all the energy. Henry and that Man. is going to do it. Your 2019 Pokemon trading card game Masters Division World Champion from Australia. It's Henry Brand. The unlikely underdog takes down Shintaro Ito, and he is now your world champion.